Welcome to episode two of the Skyrim Donut series. By the end of this video, we will have our game version of the donuts, which will look something like this. But wait, I already have donuts and now you say I have to make more? <laughs> Indeed you do. We can't use our current version because it contains way too many vertices. We can see this if we turn on statistics over here in the overlay menu. You can't use high poly models like this in a video game, or you'll be playing at 1 FPS, if you're able to play at all. So, we create another version, one with as few vertices as possible without destroying the shape. And this low detail or low poly version is what gets used in the game, with all the details from the high poly version projected onto it. We'll talk more about this later when we bake the high poly details onto our low poly model. For now, the point to remember is that you need both a high poly and a low poly model. And the low poly model is what will actually be used in the game. So let's make a low poly version of these donuts. Open your final version of the donuts from the Blender Guru tutorial. For this series, I am assuming that you have a plate of donuts with some sprinkles on top and that you followed Andrew's methods from his tutorial, which is linked here and in the description, for how you got there. First off, go ahead and save this as a new blend file because we're going to be making some destructive edits to it. Next, if you have more than just the plate of donuts in your scene, delete all the extra stuff. This includes the light, camera, backdrop, etc. You can click on objects and hit delete or X on your keyboard, or you can highlight them in the outliner and right click to delete the object or a whole hierarchy. If you moved your donuts around in the scene like I did, then we need to get them recentered at the world origin. We're going to do this the long way so that we don't end up with something that looks like this. First, we need to set the origin of all objects to the bottom center of the plate. So select only the plate, go into edit mode, and then click up here for face select, or hit three on your keyboard, and then click onto the bottom of the plate. Then hit shift S and choose cursor to selected. That should put your 3D cursor right in the middle of the plate's bottom face. Now, we set the origin of everything to this cursor. To do that, tab out so you're back in object mode, then box select or shift select the donuts and the plate. But don't use A here to select all or your sprinkles are going to explode. With the donuts and the plate selected, right click and select set origin, origin to 3D cursor. Once you've set everything's origin to the cursor, we move it all. Hit Shift S and select Cursor to World Origin. Then Shift S one more time and select Selection to Cursor. The donuts should have moved to the world origin and they should still be placed correctly on their plate. If they have misbehaved, it's probably because their origin points were not set to the bottom of the plate first. Control Z to back up and try the steps again. If your donuts are now off in the distance, hit Shift C to return the view to the center. Or you can scroll in or use forward slash like I did here. When I hit seven on the numpad for top view, I can see that my donuts are rotated. So I'm gonna fix that by hitting R for rotate, Z for the Z axis, 90 and minus. And then when I hit one on the numpad, I can see this now looks good from the front view. Okay, with just the plate of donuts in our scene and said plate nicely centered at the world origin, we are ready to start making our new low poly model. We're going to do the donuts one way and the plate another way to demonstrate a couple options you have. For the donuts, we will be adding a new mesh that is low poly from the start. This is option one making a whole new mesh. For the plate, we will use option two, which is to duplicate the high poly mesh and then edit it to reduce the poly count. Either option is valid for making your low poly object. 
The choice will depend on the complexity of the mesh and your own personal preference. To start, let's select everything except one of your bottom donuts and then hit H to hide the objects. This bottom donut is one that I know has not been rotated or tilted and so it will be the easiest one to work with. Now, let's reset the origin to the geometry and put the 3D cursor on it so that the new mesh we're about to add will be added right here. To do this, right-click on the donut, but not the icing or sprinkles, and select Set Origin and then Origin to Geometry. Then hit Shift-S and select Cursor to Selected. Click off the grid somewhere so that nothing is selected because we don't want to add our new mesh as part of an existing object. Hit Shift A to add a new mesh and select the torus. In the options window, change this to be as few loops as you think you can get away with. It's better to have less than you need and add more later. From doing this a few times, I think 12 major and 12 minor segments is a good start. And set the radius to 0.05 for major and 0.02 for minor, and that gets us to a decent starting point. Once you have your new torus, which is your new low poly model, right click on it and select Shade Smooth. Doing this now will help us fit the shape better by eliminating the most jagged edges. Now we need to play around with this a bit more to make it fit just around the high poly version. I hit numpad one for front view, and now I'm going to scale this on just the Z axis, which is up and down, by hitting S followed by Z. Then I move it up slightly by hitting G, Z, and dragging it up just a bit. Once that is set, I'm going to turn on wireframe to see how it fits. The bottom could be scaled just a bit along the X and Y axes, so I'm going to go into edit mode, change back to vertex select by clicking this button or hitting one on the main keyboard, and then box select just the bottom part. I'll hit S for scale, and then to exclude Z, the vertical axis, I will hit Shift Z. We are aiming to have this low poly mesh fit around the donut, icing, and sprinkles of the detailed model. Although, it's okay if a few bits poke out here and there. While you're working on the model, remember to use the keypad to quickly change your view. I'll put the shortcut map here on the screen. And don't forget that using wireframe view is really helpful as well. I can see by looking from the top that the whole of my low poly donut needs to be tweaked. So I go into edit mode and hold alt while clicking on an edge of this middle inside loop. Then I will add more loops to this selection by holding control and hitting plus on the numpad. Now I'm gonna scale these loops a little bit along just the X and Y axis by hitting S, Shift Z, and then moving my mouse. Note that you'll usually have more control over the movement if you keep your mouse a little bit away from the mesh when you hit S. And there we go, that looks pretty good. Now this created a big space here between these two loops, so I'm going to Alt click to select this top loop, hit G twice for loop slide, and then move it a little bit more into the middle. Now I go to front view by hitting one on the numpad. In edit mode, hold Alt and click to select this middle edge loop and then S to scale it in a little bit to make the side part flatter. Now I think that's a good base shape, but let's bring back the rest of the donuts to see how it looks with the icing and sprinkles. Hit Alt H to reveal all of the hidden objects and then select and rehide everything except for this donut, plus its icing and sprinkles, using the hotkey H. You can also use the outliner to hide and reveal objects. Let's go ahead and rename our new low poly model. Click on the name up here in the outliner and change it to something like Donut LP. Then with just the new low poly torus selected, in object mode, Hover your mouse in the viewport and hit M to put it in a new collection. Name the new collection something like Low Poly Model. 
Next, I'm going to tweak the low poly model just a bit more so that it better captures the silhouette of the high poly model. Now turn on proportional editing up here, then click on one vertex and hit G and Z to move it a little bit along the Z axis, which is up and down in certain areas. Remember to scroll your mouse wheel to make the circle of influence bigger or smaller when you're using proportional editing. Like Andrew told us while making the high poly model, you probably don't want a perfectly rounded torus for your low poly model since that will look fake. So make a few little edits, nothing crazy here, to break up the absolute perfection. And don't forget to turn off proportional editing when you're done with it. Now I'm pretty happy with how this low poly model matches my high poly model, so I'm gonna move on to the next step. You're more than welcome to pause and keep playing around with this even more. But it does not have to be perfect and you're not gonna get a perfect match anyway because our low poly model has a lot less geometry. Speaking of geometry, let's have a look at that to see if we can optimize the low poly model even further. The goal is to have just enough vertices or polygons to create the new shape with none wasted where they are not needed. There is no hard and fast rule for how much geometry your low poly model should have. But a good way to figure this out is by looking at an existing game model. For example, Skyrim has a tray of goblets that is made of about 2700 triangles or tries for short. We can get away with a bit more than that, but we don't want to go overboard. We should aim for less than double of our example item if we can manage it while keeping a nice shape. For our whole plate of donuts, I know that we can get it looking good for under 4,000 tries in total, which is less than 400 tries per donut to allow enough for eight donuts and the plate. Each time I've done this with a test set of donuts, I've optimized it differently. So there really is no right or wrong here. Just make it look good, watch your topology, and only use more vertices where they matter most. This edge loop in the middle, I'm actually going to delete because we want a fairly flat side on the donut anyway. So in edit mode, hold alt and click on an edge to select that loop. And dissolve it by hitting X and selecting dissolve edges. Dissolving is nice because it gets rid of bits without usually leaving holes in your mesh. There are other ways to accomplish the same goal, like hitting G twice and loop sliding into an adjacent loop. But be careful if you do that, that you don't end up with double overlapping vertices. If you're gonna use this method, you probably want to keep auto merge, this button here, turned on so that you don't end up with duplicate vertices. Generally, it seems that dissolve usually plays nicer, although I have often found that dissolving one loop at a time works best when the loops are adjacent to each other. I suspect this has a lot more to do with my novice modeling skills than anything else, but just be aware of that. There are many ways to achieve the same result, so you do you here. At this stage, you can do whatever you want to this low poly mesh. So feel free to delete loops, add loops, move loops, and do whatever you want. Just remember that topology is important, so don't do anything too bizarre. What we want to do here is to achieve a nice shape for the donut, but keep the try count as low as we can. For clothing, armor, character models, and other things that need to be rigged and deformed during animations, you should strictly keep all your polygons to quads when you're making your low poly model. For everything else, you can get away with using some triangles or even some minor n-gons. All of the polygons will eventually be turned into triangles for the game. And you'll want your final model to have nice looking triangles that result in good shading. After removing a few more loops by selecting them, hitting X and then dissolving edges, I think this looks pretty good from most angles. For reference, here is how my donut looks from the side, top and bottom views. Yours does not have to be identical as long as it looks good and it shades properly. My donut has 216 tries at this point, so I think I'm doing pretty good. 
and I think I can afford to add a little more geometry to help round out the shape. So let's add some geometry around one face loop here to make this donut look a bit more rounded. The knife tool is great for this. From the top orthographic view, which is 7 on your numpad, hit K on the keyboard and then click in the middle of an edge where you'd like to create a new split. Drag to another edge where you want the split to end, which in my case is just the next edge loop, and then hit enter. And voila! We've inserted some vertices into our mesh here, all connected up and ready to go. With those still selected, hit G on your keyboard and move them out slightly to round out the edge. Click off the mesh to deselect those vertices, then use the knife tool again on the next section. Hit K, click on one edge, drag and click to the next edge and hit enter. Then G, move slightly out and click. Rinse and repeat, all the way around the top of the donut. I'm going to fast forward this here, but you can just pause and take your time to make sure this looks good. The human eye is especially good at detecting when things are not round and they should be, so you should spend polygons wisely to prioritize areas like this. As a last little tweak, I'm just going all the way around to move vertices a little bit more so that I end up with a nice rounded silhouette. And there, I think that looks much better. We spent about 50 tries on that, but I think it was worth it to get this rounder shape. You can see here that I was not very precise with my knife tool in parts, and I cut through three loops instead of two. And that's where these extra edges around the middle are coming from. We'll talk more about these in a minute. But first, I'm going to smooth out the bottom of the donut by alt-clicking to select this loop, and then hitting G twice to loop slide it down a little bit. Then in wireframe, I'll box select this loop and hit G, and then Z to move it down a little bit, and then hit S to scale it in just a smidge. Now here's where I actually noticed the extra edges that I made with the knife tool, so I need to dissolve these extra vertices. First, I select them using shift click, and then hit X and dissolve vertices. And, well, oops, <laughs> that got rid of some edges too, so now we just use the knife tool again to reconnect everything quickly. In hindsight, I probably should have connected all those vertices down the sides of the donut. But it's okay, this is all going to work out fine in the end. Now looking down here, we've got some weird shading. And you may have noticed some jaggedy parts on the donut from the side. So let's go ahead and add a triangulate modifier, which should help smooth some of the parts out, and which we need to do at some point anyway, because remember, game models have to be in triangles. In object mode, with the donut selected, click on the wrench over here and then plus to add a modifier. In the search bar, start typing triangle until it shows up, and then select the triangulate modifier from the list. And I don't know if you can tell from the video, but I can see that some of these parts look a bit better, but we still have this problem here. I'm guessing that there are some duplicate vertices in these areas, so let's have a look. As one of my instructors would say, it's time to wiggle. Tap into edit mode, grab one of these vertices, and drag your mouse to move it. Aha! There's one right there. Cancel that, and then hit A to select all the vertices, and then M to merge by distance. Now, that did not seem to do very much, so let's have a look at the tool's options here. I think this merge distance is set to low, so I'll play with that until I get it just right. But just don't set it too high or you're going to merge vertices that you don't want merged and your model will break. A setting of 0.001 did the trick for me. And there we go. That looks much better. Now I think it's still a bit too sharp here from the side, so I'm going to add an edge loop here. In edit mode, hold Ctrl and hit R, mouse over the mesh until it shows where the loop will be added, and then click to place it, and right click to cancel any extra movement. And then I'll just, well, oops, not do that, 
Then I'll go into wireframe, select first this loop and use double G to slide it. And then I'll do the same for the other loop here. Then S to scale it just slightly. Now I really got a little carried away when I was recording this here, but let's just walk through it. So I selected this loop up on the top and I did this very messily. So to fix that, I hit C for circle select. And then I held shift while mousing over the area to deselect the extra vertices I don't want. Now I just S to scale this loop a smidge and G and Z to move it up very slightly. And now I think that's looking pretty smooth. Now this is all well and good, but now we probably have more tries than we need because I don't think the extra geometry in this upper face loop is really helping us. So let's select and dissolve the extra edges that we just created. We could go around and manually select all of these little edges and dissolve them, but we're gonna do something fancy instead. Go to edge select mode by hitting two on the main keyboard or clicking up here. Then select one little edge and go to select, select loops, edge rings. That will select all of them all the way around. But we don't want all of them, we only want every other one. Now, don't do this, I just wanna show you what happens if we dissolved all of these edges. And that's not good. So, now control Z to undo that. So we need to dissolve only every other one. Go to select and checker deselect. And now you'll see that it has picked up every other edge, although right now it's the wrong ones. So in the pop-up window, we can adjust the behavior. You can play around with the settings here, but all we really need to do is shift the increment by one, which now picks up those edges that we want to eliminate. So with those selected, we hit X and dissolve edges. And there we go. We've quickly gotten rid of some extra geometry and the shape still looks pretty nice at the top. We can improve this a bit more by doing a similar thing at the bottom. This time, I'm gonna start by adding an edge loop. First, I'll make some room for it. In edit mode, Alt-click to select this loop and double G to slide it, followed by S to scale it just a bit. Now hold Control and hit R. Hover your mouse to where you want to add the loop and click to add it and right click to set it in place. Then S to scale it out just a little bit so that it rounds the shape out some more. Now, this looks good from the side, but from the bottom, we can see that it's really not brilliant. So let's go around and use the knife tool again, just like we did before, to add a little geometry. This will be easiest in bottom orthographic view, so hit seven on the numpad to go into top view, and then nine on the numpad, which will go to the opposite view, which is the bottom in our case. We can space these loops out better, I think, so let's Alt-click to select and double G to slide them. Now I'm going to use the knife tool between the edges here so we can make the silhouette rounder. Hit K, click on an edge, drag and click on another edge and hit enter. Then G and move the vertices out a little bit to round the shape. Oops, I had a stray vertex selected there, so I will click off of everything to deselect it, then box select just these two and hit G to move them. As long as you stay in orthographic view, you can just use G without any axis constraints because it will only move things parallel to where they are. This is handy because it keeps everything in the same plane so you don't end up with vertices sticking up higher or lower than they should be. Go all around the edge with the knife tool, just like we did before, using G to move the vertices out so that we get a rounder shape. Hindsight being 2020, I realized several videos later that I should have connected the vertices along the side, as shown here, to get rid of this six-sided end gone that I created. You can do that now if you want, or you can just leave it because it will triangulate nicely later on. One other note is that I probably should have taken the time to turn all my end gons into quads. Not doing this now means that we have an extra step later when we do our UV unwrap. It's not the end of the world, but it does add a little bit of time and tedium to the workflow. So the moral of the story is to use quads as much as you can. And remember to only use quads if you are making things that need to deform like clothing and armor. All right, here we go. I think that's looking pretty nice. I'm just gonna tweak this top loop a little bit by alt clicking to select it 
and then using double G to loop slide. I'll also make sure I don't have any double vertices by hitting A to select everything, and then M to merge by distance. And this is the point where you get to see my perfectionistic tendencies in full force, because I just can't seem to leave this silly donut alone. So I did a few more little tweaks here and there, which you are free to do or not to do as you prefer. But finally, I think we are done modeling the low poly donut. I know this took a bit of time, and I apologize for the length of this video. But what we've got here now is a fairly smooth looking donut for 360 tries. For reference, here are my final side, top, and bottom views. Yours does not have to look identical, but it should be nice and smooth and rounded looking with very good looking shading. Now we'll have to duplicate this donut for the other seven on our plate, but before we do that, we're going to do the UV unwrapping so that it only has to be done once. This sounds like a good topic for our next video. So save your Blender file now, and then I'll see you in the next episode for UV unwrapping, duplicating and positioning the rest of our donuts, and making the low poly model for our plate. Thanks for watching and sticking this long one out, and I'll see you soon for the next episode. Bye.